We know that preliminary reports have already started pouring in about the possible third wave of COVID from some areas in the country. We also know that recently pediatric admissions have gone up albeit due to other tropical infections like dengue, malaria, scrub typhus etc. So are you confused between entities like multisystem inflammatory syndrome related to COVID, Kawasaki's disease, toxic shock syndrome, hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis and macrophage activation syndrome? So in this video, I shall discuss the similarities between these entities and also the dissimilarities between these entities which we are likely to confuse. The third wave of COVID is at bay, so we must first revise the diagnostic criteria for MISC as per the World Health Organization as also published in the Indian Pediatrics this year. There are basically five criteria. So the first is that children and adolescents 0 to 18 years of age with fever more than equal to 3 days and any two of the following five which indicate systemic involvement. These are rash or bilateral non purulent conjunctivitis or mucocutaneous inflammatory signs like oral hands and feet, hypotension or shock, features of myocardial dysfunction, pericarditis, valvulitis or coronary abnormalities including eco findings or even elevated troponin anti pro BNP also are considered to be markers of myocardial dysfunction. Any evidence of coagulopathy be it elevated PTAPTT or D-dimers and acute gastrointestinal problems like diarrhea, vomiting or abdominal pain. Along with these two of the following five systemic involvement features, there should be elevated markers of inflammation like raised ESR more than 40 mm in first hour and raised CRP more than 5 mg per liter or raised procalcitonin and there should be no other obvious microbial cause of inflammation including bacterial sepsis, staph or streptococcal shock syndromes. And there should be an evidence of recent COVID-19 infection like a positive RT-PCR antigen or a positive serology or a likely contact with patients with COVID-19. So the alternative diagnosis that must be excluded before making a diagnosis of MISC are tropical fevers like malaria, dengue, scrub typhus and enteric fever which we are seeing a surge these days especially in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Then toxic shock syndrome caused by staphylococcal or streptococcal infection and bacterial sepsis. But there are certain other entities who I had already discussed in the previous slides which we are likely to confuse with. You can also find a detailed video on MISC I had published earlier this year and the link of which I will share below. Now coming on to how to differentiate between MISC and Kawasaki's disease. We know that Kawasaki's disease is defined by fever more than equal to 5 days along with minimum of 4 of the following 5 criteria. These are extremity changes which in the acute stage are in the form of erythema or edema of hands and feet and in the subacute stage they can progress on to periangual peeling and fibrosis, polymorphous exanthem, bilateral non purulent conjunctival injection, erythema or edema of lips, strawberry trunk and mucosa and cervical lymphadenopathy along with exclusion of other causes. We also know that Kawasaki's disease is typical or classic if four of the, fall, five, the defining five features are present and it is atypical or incomplete if less than four of the five features are present. So the common features between MISC and KD are the presence of fever, mucocutaneous involvement can be there, erythema and edema and rash that is extremity or skin changes, coronary artery aneurysms, increased total leukocyte count with polymorphic predominance and increased CRP and ESR. So how will you differentiate? What we know that Kawasaki disease like presentation can, one of the, can be one of the presentations of MISC. So MISC can have basically three kinds of presentation we will see actually I have I have mentioned it in detail in a previous video of mine. The three, pre the three presentations to recapitulate are febrile inflammatory state, Kawa state Kawasaki disease like presentation and a typical multi organ dysfunction along with shock. So MISC is Kawasaki can have Kawasaki disease like presentation as one of the presentations.
It is typically seen in the age group 0 to 18 years as we had seen in the last scene and there will be an evidence of current or recent SARS coronavirus 2 infection. On the other hand, Kawasaki disease is usually seen in younger age group that is less than 5 years of age. So you should have a confusion between MISC and KD in younger children. They will usually have unilateral non-suppurated cervical lymphadenopathy which is not commonly seen in patients with MISC. Periangular disc formation will be visible in second to third week in Kawasaki disease and thrombocytosis will also be there usually starting from the second week whereas in MISC thrombocytopenia is there. Arthralgia and arthritis can progress on to develop in patients with Kawasaki disease from third week onwards. If we compare MISC with toxic shock syndrome, we know that TSS is defined as fever more than 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit, systolic blood pressure less than 5th percentile that is a state of shock, diffuse macular erythroderma, disc formation of palms and soles 1 to 2 weeks later, more than equal to 3 organ system involvement and cultures of serology negative for other pathogens that is positive for Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. We also know that TSS can is confirmed if all the six criteria are met with and it is probable if only five of the six criteria are present. So the common features are that there will be presence of fever, shock in the type of MISC likely to be confused with TSS, mucocutaneous involvement, multi-organ syndrome and cytokine storm is a classical feature of both of these entities. In TSS, the cytokine storm occurs because of activation by the bacterial super antigens like TSST1. To differentiate, we know that MISC will have negative cultures for staph or strep unless and until there is a super added infection by these organisms and there will be a definite evidence of current or recent SARS coronavirus 2 infection. TSS is definitely secondary to staph or strep bacterial toxemia. You can have a clinical or lab evidence of the same. It is mediated by bacterial super antigens as I have already told and there will be a very good and prompt response to antibiotics in case of TSS. While MISC will have to, will have to be managed with anti-inflammatory therapy like steroids and etc. Steroids and etc. can flare up TSS on the other hand. Now, hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis is a term which is not clearly understood by many people and we can confuse MISC with HRH because we are not very clear about many of the people are not very clear of as to what HLH is. So to revise, HLH is defined by one of the following two criteria, either a molecular diagnosis consistent with HLH, for example, PRF purpurin mutations, SAP mutations or Presence of 5 or of 8 of the following, which is the usual criteria which we use for diagnosing HLH. It is largely clinical and with help from the laboratory evidence. So, these are fevers, splenomegaly, cytopenia is affecting more than equal to 2 cell lines, hypertriglyceridemia and or hypofibrinogenemia. This is very important. Hemophagocytosis evidence in bone marrow, spleen or lymph node, low or absent NK cell cytotoxicity, hyperferritinemia which is common and increased soluble CD25 more than equal to 2400 units per ml. We also know that HLH can be primary which is referred to as familiar HLH or it can be secondary for example secondary to infection which is reported as infection associated HLH or secondary to malignancy called as malignancy associated HLH. So the common features we saw are fever, cytopenias and raised serum ferritin. But the uncommon features are that MISC will have an evidence of SARS coronavirus infection and in MISC the CD8 cell activation is there. So the main inflammatory uh, agent is the lymphocyte. Whereas in HLH activation of antigen presenting cells, both macrophages and lymphocytes occur. These, these antigen presenting cells are typically positive for CD163. There will be definitely hepatosplenomegaly in patients with HLH low ESR is a very prominent finding which will help you differentiate between MISC and HLH and hemophagocytosis is also there but for that you will require a bone marrow which you don't need to do in patients with MISC usually. MISC patients usually respond very 
uh, very uh, rapidly to these anti-inflammatory drugs. Now coming on to macrophage activation syndrome, it is a type of HLH only and uh, it is defined by serum ferritin more than 684 nanogram per ml and any two of the following four laboratory criteria. These are thrombocytopenia, elevated liver enzymes, hypertriglyceridemia and hypohydronogenemia again. So the common features are fever, increased serum ferritin and liver enzymes and cytopenias etc. But the uncommon features are obviously the presence of evidence of current or recent COVID infection in MISC. Whereas macrophage activation syndrome is a type of HLH, is a kind of H, similar to HLH, not a type of HLH, it is, it is almost similar to HLH in many uh, aspects. And it is typically seen in the setting of systemic onset GIA. It is also seen in SLE, enthesitis related arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. There will be evidence of reticular endothelial system proliferation that is there will be an evidence of hepatosplenomegaly, lymphadenopathy which is usually not seen in MISC. Low ESR is again I am pointing out it is a very prominent differentiating feature between MISC and MAS and this occurs because of hypofibrinogenemia which is seen in MAS also it is also seen in HLH. The management options for all the entities discussed include a few common drugs. These are IVIG used in MISC, KD and TSS. It is used to decrease inflammation and prevent coronary artery aneurysms in a dose of 1 to 2 gram per kg over 1 to 2 days. Steroids, MISC, KD and HLS or MAS and pulse steroids are used to decrease inflammation. They are typically not used in toxic shock syndrome. This shows a dramatic response to antibiotics itself. Aspirin is used in MISC with KD like presentation that is having a risk of or having frank coronary artery aneurysms and also in Kawasaki disease. In moderate dose, the dose is 30 to 50 mg per kg per day QID and high dose is 80 to 100 mg per kg per day QID. It is continued for 6 to 8 weeks if the patient has an echo which is normal on presentation or it might be uh, continued indefinitely if coronary artery aneurysms are present on presentation, on admission. Then biologicals like anakinera are used in patients with MISC, HLH and MAS if there is poor response to anti-inflammatory agents. Anticoagulants like low molecular weight heparin is used in MISC and Kawasaki disease. And antibiotics have to be used in almost all of the above entities, but they will show a very good response in patients with toxic shock syndrome. To summarize the clinching features now, Kawasaki disease will be characterized by cervical lymphadenopathy, extremity changes and thrombocytosis. Extremity changes can be seen in MISC with a KD-like presentation, but in Kawasaki disease, these changes especially the subacute changes. The acute changes can be there, but the subacute changes and thrombocytosis is typically seen later in the course of illness. Toxic shock syndrome will have a definite clinical or laboratory evidence of bacterial infection and macrophage activation syndrome oblique HLH can be differentiated by the activation of monocyte macrophage in them, presence of lymphadenopathy and hepatosplenomegaly. Low ESR, this is very important differentiating feature I am again and again stressing on the fact and low fibrin because of low fibrinogen in these two entities and in macrophage activation syndrome, it is usually seen in the setting of systemic concept JIA. Thank you for watching and uh, do share the knowledge. Thanks a lot.